It's too early. It's too early to celebrate. It's only the preseason. It's just one game. So, whatever. You know? Why be optimistic about this? Well, let me ask you this question. Why not be optimistic about this? Come on, guys! This game was amazing. Okay? I get it. You know, Raptors fans, we've been burnt in the past before. That narrative has changed. Masai has changed that narrative, guys. Let's look past it. But, and I, I get it, it's just a preseason game. But there's so much to be excited about from this game. It really tells you how deep we are, guys. Hello, everyone. Satsuri Kal. Welcome, everybody, to the fifth episode of Raptors in One. So, we're going to be talking about the last preseason game between the Washington Wizards and the Toronto Raptors. And this was an away game for us. So, uh, you know, if you haven't watched the game already, you should. But, spoiler alert, Raptors won. I told y'all, I told y'all, Raptors was going to win. I told you that. Yes, I know, I, in my last episode, I hesitated a little bit, you know, I was kind of like, hmm, because I knew the Wizards had some upgrades. Like, they, 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 they got quite a few players. I just didn't know who they were that time. But then I dug in a little deep, and I found out that they have some really interesting characters. And I'm going to talk about that a little later on in this video. But yeah, this, this win, I know it's only the preseason, but there is a reason to be really excited about it. So without any further ado, let's get it. So guys, uh, for the Toronto Raptors squad, uh, we were missing quite a few key players, okay? Um, we didn't have uh, Freddie, Fred Van Vliet. He wasn't playing. Uh, we didn't have, obviously, we haven't had Pascal in a while. We're not gonna have him for, I think, at least until um, early to mid-November is the proposed timeline. We don't know. Uh, to be honest, I feel like I don't know. I think with the way the squad's been playing lately, let's not rush him, you know? Let's, um, I would say, maybe bring him on out if we get a Christmas game, but I don't think we have a Christmas game this year. I could be wrong. Maybe the Christmas schedule's, Christmas game schedule hasn't been released yet. We didn't have Chris Boucher, obviously, as well. You know, um, I don't think he's coming back until maybe, um, to be honest, I'm not going to guess here, so I don't really know when he's going to be back. Uh, and we also didn't have OG, our main guy who's been killing it the whole preseason. Uh, we didn't have OG. And when I <laughs> when the game had started and I saw the lineup, I was like, oof, I know I did call that the Raptors was going to win, but this is going to be a tough win, especially with the Wizards roster. I kind of had an idea, but then I forgot about it because th this time the trade when the, when the when the trades had opened up, it was so exciting. Like there was so much movement, especially with the Lakers. Like they were just all over the news. Like oh, we got Westbrook. Oh, we got uh, Dwight Howard. Oh, we got Melo. Oh, we almost got the banana boat on our side. You know, like psh, whatever, man. But there were so many other interesting moves that happened. Um, so like, and Washington happens to be one of them. And um, they have some very interesting pieces, and I believe if they can work together and get along, they buy into their roles and they buy into the system, I think this could be like a deep playoff team. Uh, so let's see, who do they have? They have uh, Spencer Dinwiddie. They got Spencer Dinwiddie from the Brooklyn Nets. I really like Spencer Dinwiddie as a player, so they got him, so that was good. Then we got uh, Montrez Harrell. Like, he's a very good from a four or five uh, guy as well. Like, he's he's really good. Uh, Kyle Kuzma, obviously, you now we're getting into the whole Lakers squad. And uh, Contavious, Contavious Caldwell Pope. Uh, he's also not a bad player as well. Like, you know, he's a good bench player, I would say. Talk about upgrade, guys. I think, like, with these four or five players that they've got, like, this is an amazing squad. 
Like, I think they're going to make a deep playoff run. Um, no, when I say deep, uh, I don't, I don't, to be honest, like, I, right now, the way they've played, I know it's just a preseason, you can't judge, right? Because things can happen in the actual season. Maybe they start gelling, maybe they start, uh, you know, learning to play with each other. Maybe the GM hasn't done making moves yet, because I feel like Washington is just one superstar away from making real noise and going to the finals. They just need one superstar, which means that some of the players that they've acquired, perhaps maybe they might want to flip them over along with maybe some draft picks to get a superstar. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Maybe a disgruntled superstar joins them. If anybody says Ben Simmons, I swear to God, I don't see. I'm a Raptors fan, and we do kind of have like a little bit of a rivalry with Washington. But I would not wish a Ben Simmons even on a Washington Wizards. However, if that means we're going to be playing against them, I still wouldn't wish it because, you know, Ben Simmons, he's, he's a good defender. But I wouldn't mind that because then I'll be like, hey, you want to shoot that ball? Go ahead. Take that jump shot, buddy. All day. All day. Take that jump shot. So coming back to the Raptors, um, you know, I think... Everybody who played tonight, uh, they played well. Um, you know, I was kind of uh, almost losing hope in Freddie Gillespie. I kind of was, but uh, he started picking it up. He started getting desperate close to the end of the game, but he still did. He still picked it up, and um, you know, like I liked him. I liked his performance last season, and um, I, I was just hoping that he would maybe carry on or maybe even improve just a little bit. You know. But uh, he seemed like he was lost uh, in the um, summer league as well as in the preseason. So, yeah, good luck, Freddie. I hope uh, you uh, find your groove. And I hope you make that roster spot. We're going to get into the roster spots too. Malachi had a good game. Yep, Malachi Flynn, he played very well. Uh, let's look at the stats here. So we got Malachi Flynn, 26 minutes. Um, he got 22 points, 3 assists, 2 boards, 6 for 15 shooting, uh, you know, uh, 1 block, 2 steals, good defense. Yeah, he was, uh, he was, he was hustling all over the floor, I could see that. He had, he had some passion on defense this time around, and he's finally starting to get, uh, comfortable, uh, on the offensive end too. Um, like in the summer league he killed it, and then something happened in the Preseason games, he started fading away, he started not getting as many minutes. Then it's kind of like Nurse was like, okay, you know, all right, I think you need to get some playing time. And now he's playing good. He's uh, starting to get comfortable at least. Yeah, that was Malachi Flynn. He he was the player of the game. Yeah, I guess he could, he could get the player of the game honors this time around. He actually played well and uh, having to play through some dry spells in the previous games, uh, yeah. So, congratulations Malachi, you are the player of the game, according to Raptors and Warren. Sam Decker, he was another guy um, that I really liked his game. Um, he showed up, he showed up and, and he showed why we picked him up. They're hungry for that roster spot, man. There are three roster spots left and they're hungry. They're hungry, and uh, he scored. He did very well. Let's look at him. Like uh, 16 minutes, 18 points. That's amazing. One assist, one board, 7 of 10 field goal percentage. 70%. Oh, yeah. Good at my math. Um, yeah, and uh, three-point percentage, 4 of 5. Yeah. There's a reason why we picked him up. It was, it was for that. It was for the three-point percentage. Um, apart from everything else, like he also actually this time around, he mixed it up very well, you know, um, cause that's, that's the one thing about being an elite shooter. You don't, if you're an elite shooter, people start to recognize your tendencies and they know that, Hey, you're going for that shot, whether you're, you know, running off the screen or, uh, like off the ball action, or you're just waiting for a catch and shoot, or you ISO, whatever play you want to run. You want to shoot. And as a defender, if you're looking at that scouting report, you know that shot's coming at some point. 
He mixed it up very well this time around. He not only uh, shot the ball well, obviously four or five from three point percent uh, from the three point arc, but he also uh, had a few drives, you know. And so obviously, yeah, he needs, he's he's mixing it up well. Now I gotta talk about my boy Precious, who's so precious. You know what, man, Precious? Oh, now that I look back at that trade. Oh, the sign and trade, man. Kyle Lowry going to the Heat. You know what? I feel like this trade worked out well for both teams, but for some reason, I feel like we have benefited a little more. And this is nothing against Kyle Lowry. He is one of, if not, the best Raptor of all time. If you guys want to tell me who the best Raptor, according to you, is of all time, let me know who you think and why of all time. But I don't want to digress from the game. I don't want to digress from the game. Don't worry. And why? But I don't want to digress from the game. video. Yeah, just just video. So coming back to Precious, yeah, he played he played an excellent game too. Um, you know, mind you, field goal percentage wasn't the best, three of nine. Whatever. You know, people are allowed an off night every now and then. But you gotta look at every everything else. He almost had a double double again. You know, with with more playing time that he gets, he is gonna get comfortable, and then he's gonna be a regular double double machine. And you know, I wouldn't be surprised if it's not this year. He may not make the um, uh, All Star team, or he might. Who knows? But he's very close. He's very close, and I know we're gonna develop him into an All Star. It's gonna happen while he's a Raptor. So he's got, he's got 9 points, 10 rebounds, almost a double-double, again. Um, one steal, no blocks this time around, but that doesn't mean that he wasn't playing good defense. Now, I've been watching him, the way he's been defending those perimeter players, he defends them extremely well. The way he moves, the way he handles the ball, like he is an all-star in the making. It's just a matter of time for this kid, you know? Um... Like, he's got good handles. The way he moves his feet on defense, that's what every coach preaches. When you want to defend, you want to move your feet. Don't, don't just rely on your hands. Move your feet. He moves them so well. He guards guards like as if he is a guard. But he's a big man, and he's strong, and he's he's got good balance. He's got good speed. Oh, like, the future for this kid is bright. Now, of course, I'm going to be talking about my next boy, Scotty Barnes. Um, you know, let's look at the stats before I have to, like, rave about this guy. So he's got 9 points, 7 assists. And I love it. I love it when my big men can, like, distribute the ball. Oh, 9 points, 7 assists, 3 boards. That's very uncharacteristic of uh, Scotty Barnes. But that's okay. Every now and then, you're going to have one of those kind of games. He's a rookie. But he's got 24 minutes in. And on a back-to-back, -back, that's pretty impressive, my friends. I feel like Scotty Barnes, he's, uh, he's NBA ready. You know? Like, I know he's a rookie. Yes, he has a few of those rookie lapses, mental lapses. Which rookie doesn't? Hell, even LeBron had mental lapses in his rookie season. I'm not comparing Barnes to LeBron, but I'm just saying, you know? Like, he's he's... When I say he's NBA ready, if he is not impacting the game on the offensive end, he still finds a way. He still finds a way as long as we get the W. He's hungry. He values every possession. He's diving for the balls, out of bounds balls. He's diving for the loose balls. He's scoring off the ball, on the ball. You know, he's, he's defending the guards very well. Again, mobile defender. You know, defending inside the paint, contesting every shot, and he's got that energy. Like, it's very infectious. Again, like, I know it's the same things that I talk about this kid, but when it's helping your team win, like, it just makes you excited. It just makes you want to watch him even more, and you want makes him want to watch these games even more. Just like, hopefully, my content will make you excited to watch me even more. Don't worry, I'm going to get even more hyped up, even more excited. I just can't wait till the season will begin. Hell, I, th I was wishing that tonight's game was the season game. But, you know, the season's going to start uh, 
seven days from now, but that's okay. It's the little, you know, nuances that you have to notice in the game. Like, you know, a player like Scotty Barnes, when you know he's a good player, he's somebody special, when, for example, you know, there's a play stoppage because your teammate is shooting a free throw. Your coach calls you over. He's like, hey, he talks to you and you agree with it. When you see something like that, it tells you a lot of things about this player and the team and the coach. It says that this player is doing something right because he's got the coach's attention. And the coach even knows that, which is why he's calling him every little chance he can get to guide this player. He's going to take that and he's trying to blossom him into his all-star. And, and it should happen. I think it should happen. Uh, and and the, what really impresses me about this guy, for a big man, the way he distributes the ball, his IQ, the timing, the patience with which he runs the game and how it lets the play develop, for a rookie, it's amazing. Um, I have noticed that he does need to work on a few things. He does need to work on, you know, maybe a little more ball handling, of course, his shot too a little bit. Um, but everything else that he's doing, whether it's uh, making plays for his teammates or defending the ball extremely well, uh, you know, understanding the play, patience, these are all very mature attributes for a rookie. He's a very promising rookie, and I'm so glad we picked him now over Jalen Sucks. It makes me wonder, is he going to lead the rookies in assists this year? I mean, come on, man. Seven assists? And one of those dimes that he dropped, that was my favorite. That was my highlight of the game. My highlight of the game was when he dropped a dime to, again, one of my favorite players, Precious. The way he read the play, the way he saw what was going to happen, and then the way he executed that pass. That was a spin pass in between at least two, if not three, Wizards defenders. Precious almost fumbled that pass, but... I'm so glad he grabbed that and finished it. it was like That was, to me, the highlight of the game. To tell you guys how good the defense was. Um, I noticed with Bradley Beal, you know, he, uh, I think he was like the second leading scorer in the NBA last season. And this time around, I could tell the emphasis was to stop Beal. Because in the, uh, I think he scored his first, if I'm not mistaken, he scored his first three points in the third quarter, I think. Um, yeah, third quarter. A whole half he did not score. You know, Achua was guarding him at one point. Barnes was guarding him at one point. Um, I think they, they just threw, like, different looks at him. Gary Trent was guarding him at one point. Yeah, I think they just threw different looks at him. And, uh, yeah, like, they made it. And it's amazing. You know that your defense is good on an elite scorer like Beal when he gets frustrated in a preseason game. He got frustrated in a preseason game. This is not even the season. This is not even the playoffs. This is just a preseason game. That's good defense. Final thoughts uh, before we sign out here. Uh, we have three roster spots left. And we have six players fighting for those spots. Last three spots out of those six in the in the, in the roster. And uh, pick your three players, and I'm gonna tell you my three picks. Uh, I say, um, I, I say Utah Watanabe, he should be getting one of those uh, spots for sure. Yeah, he did not uh, play in the summer league, he, and he, he didn't play in the preseason, but I feel like, I guess just by his performance in the last season, that's why he gets that one spot. Um, and, you know, to be honest, like, his work ethic is good, and he hustles, and he's, um, he's actually uh, a good defender, too. So, yeah, I would like to see him in, in that spot, for sure. Um, I'll give the next one to Sam Decker. Uh, that's just me. Uh, and it's not just because of this one one preseason game where he scored well and played well. But I feel like, you know, he could be that kind of like a, uh, like a Jason Capono for us, you know? 
that elite three-point shooter who can stretch the floor. Um, so, yeah, I think uh, he could be, like, I would give the next one to Decker. And then, of course, the final spot, uh, I was kind of debating between Freddie Gillespie and Justin Champagny. Um, and to be honest, as much as I was very impressed with Freddie G, I think I would give that spot to Justin Champagny. If you want to get more of my videos, which again, um, I'm only starting now, so I'm going to get more content coming up. I've got some great ideas coming, um, but patience, right? So if you guys want, subscribe to my channel. Um, and yeah, uh, or just, or just comment what you guys thought about the game. Um, hit the thumbs up button. Maybe it looks something like this. Right? Hit the thumbs up button. And if you want more content, subscribe. And uh, yeah, until next time, have a good night. I'm out.